creating a solar system using 3.js. 3.js is the world's most popular JavaScript library. It's used to create and animate 3D or 3D graphics and display it on a web browser. It manipulates a JavaScript API called WebGL to render graphics in an HTML5 component, which is of course a web browser. It was first released by Ricardo Cabello on GitHub in April 2010. Also, you don't even need to download a special application nor a plugin to use 3GS. Today, in order to make you discover 3.js, rather than just showing you abstract pieces of code, we are going to do a small project to teach you as much as possible about this library. The project we are going to do today is a simulation of a solar system in 3D. First, we will set up our working environment, add a camera, controls, background, lights, planets, and their movement. Thus, we we'll get a solar system. Before we start, we need some assets. But don't worry, we will cut them ourselves. Go to the NASA website, it provides us with a lot of 3D models of stellar objects. This is where you can download the 3D models needed for a solar system in GLB format. For our example, we will download the Earth, Sun, Mars, and Saturn. We will also look for a starry background on Google Image. Take the one you prefer. We put the 3D models of our planets in a subdirectory of our project. We also put our background image. Finally, all we have to do is create the HTML file. So the file structure of our project is complete. Now, we can finally start programming in our HTML file. Before I start, let's remember the structure of the HTML. We can globally split an HTML file into two different elements, the head and the body. The head contains all the metadata related to our application. You can set the title of the page, define the ASCII encoding standard, and do a lot of imports, like style sheets or libraries. The body, that we will see later, contains the content of the page, what we will be displayed and visible to all users. But let's go back to the head section. Something here is really important. We are importing three JavaScript scripts. These imports are essential for the functioning of this app. First, we need to import 3.js to be able to use it, which seems logical. Then, we will have to import the G, uh, GLTF loader script, the one will help us to manipulate 3D objects. We will use, we'll use it to load our planets. Finally, the last import is an optional one. RB control script will allow us to move around the scene, which makes our system more dynamic and more playful. I'll put this import in the description of the video. Now that the steps are finished, our environment is set up. Good news, we'll be able to start our project. Let's open the body tag. You can write the script into an external JavaScript file. We'll just have to import it in tidyhead. For this demonstration, we'll not create an external file, but just write our code inside a script tag. As we are manipulating 3D objects, we need to add a render element to specify to our HTML that we want to do this. Create a variable renderer with the WebGL renderer function and define some attribute. I will set the size of this renderer so it can adapt to the size of your screen. Then you just have to add this child element to the HTML DOM. The renderer will allow us to store our model. 
but we also need to create a scene inside. Once it is done, let's take a look at the camera. Every scene has its camera. You can set the file of view and its position of the scene. Here we are setting up the camera to the middle of the scene with the file of view of 75. We can still move the camera manually later by changing its position attributes. At the end of this task, you can see on the schema that we have now the scene, but we cannot move it. As we said earlier, we set up an orbit control to be able to move around the model with the camera. Let's create variable controls based on our camera and our renderer. You can move your camera in the model by playing with its X and Y positions attributes. We also define a limit for the controls so that the user cannot go anywhere. We fix a maximum distance so it will be impossible to move further. After each move of the user, you'll have to refresh the camera parameters to be able to see the changes. Everything here is automatically set up by the library. You have not to refresh by hand each position attribute of the camera. This is one of the advantages of the 3.js. So now, we can move our camera using the orbit control, but at the moment, we still can't see anything on the page that's the objective of the next step. Free.js allows us to add geometric forms. For our background, we will need a sphere geometry. Let's call the free sphere geometry function by specifying the radius, the height, and the height of the sphere. The goal is to create a sphere big enough to cover the entire model, which is normal because it is a background. At this moment, the form is created but it does not look as we would like to. We would like to apply the appearance of a starry sky to it. Let's use a mesh basic material function which will allow us to fix a material appearance to the sphere. This appearance can also have a texture to make it more realistic. Here, we will load our star image as a texture. Finally, you just have to add this mesh to our send, like every time. The background is not defined, but it is difficult to see anything. However, I assure you that the stars are there. We will now add a light atmosphere to this model. In this part of our code, we add lights to the scene by making an instance of the light class and set its color in hexadecimal code, its intensity and its decay in parameters. The first instance corresponds to the light emitted from the sun, while the second light represents the natural light in space. The difference between the types of light is that the point light produces light from one point that gets emitted in all directions, and the ambient light is present in the entire scene and allows us to see all the planets in the scene. If you look at this diagram, you can see that we have implemented all the elements necessary to simulate a space environment. Thanks to the lights, we will be able to see the different models that will be added. Indeed, we can finally create the planets. To add the planet, we must first create them. We will create a list of objects with an attribute URL corresponding to the place register the 3D model. Here, we stock them in the directory model. The attribute set will contain the 3D model, the size for the coordinate x, y, z, the rotation for x, y, z, a distance compared to the sun, 
and a speed for the other planet. Let's take the example of the Earth. We put the URL where the model is stored. The scene is not defined for the moment. Its size will be 0.1 for the three dimension. We put a rotation on the y axis of 0.1, 200 meters from the sun, and a speed of 200. We obtain a list of planets. All the objects have been created, they must be loaded. For load all models, we create a loader to read the GLTF file. We use a for loop to browse your list of planets. For all the objects, we load the model with the load method of your loader object. The load method needs the model obtained with the URL on a function which takes as a parameter a GLTF obtained by the load method. With the traverse method, we browse the object of the scene. If it is a geometrical object, in this case, we put a shadow on it or we materialize the two sides. We also assign the scene of the object GLTF to the scene of the planet. We put the size of the object planet of the list to the size of the scene of the planet for the coordinate x, y, and z. And to finish, we put the position of the planet compared to the sun for the axis x. We then add the planet sun to the sun. So now, your sun has planet, as you can see. We just need to rotate them so that the project is finished. For adding planet rotation, we then create your render function to display the planet. Request animation frame allow us to tell the browser that we want to do an animation and tell us which function to render every 60 milliseconds. Now, to make the planet rotate, we declare a time variable which will store the current time. Then, for all the planets, if the planet has a scene and a distance, we modify its rotation axe according to the planet's data. This will allow the planet to rotate on itself. Then, to make the planet turn around the sun, it is necessary to store the speed of the planet, the angle of rotation, and the distance compared to the sun. To calculate the new position of the planet, we use the cost method of the math library. We multiply the temp with the division of 1 by the angle multiplied by the speed. Then, we multiply the result of the cost with the distance between the planet and the sun. We update the camera control. After the render function, we call the function so that the code can be executed. Now, your scene is finished. Indeed, we have added their movement around the sun. To sum up, we have created a scene, a camera, control, light, a background with star, planets, and we have made them turn around the sun. Now, let's see the result of your code. As you can see, the planet turn around the sun. You can easily add planets and modify their displacement using the data array we create in step 7. It's beautiful, isn't it? So overall, we learned the technology that we didn't master before. We enjoyed learning it throughout the lessons. However, it was complicated to make a video tutorial. Indeed, when we do 3GS, 
the result is only visible at the very end of our code, contrary to code types. Moreover, the treaty is accompanied by a set of very complex notions which can be complicated to understand. Therefore, we have chosen to explain things as simply as possible in this tutorial. Indeed, treaties can be expanded, the possibilities are wide, and we can go further than what we made so far. Thank you for following this tutorial to the end. You will find a link to the source code and the demo of the project in the description of the video.